Hey guys, welcome to an Abathur video. Uh, Joker asked in a uh, comment to the Phoenix video um, if I could do an Abathur guide. And while I don't play Abathur that much, we had a couple of good Abathur games in the HEC. So we're going to look at one of the replays from that. And I will explain uh, what Abathur generally is doing or should be doing. Uh, so I hope that this is helpful. Um, if you need something else, please let me know in the comments if you want something shorter or something um, more along the lines of like a, a very quick guide. Uh, this will be a pretty long video. We're going to go into a lot of details about Abathur. So um, if you already know a lot about Abathur, it's probably best to skip this uh, and look for more, um, you know, like a squeezed in guide from somebody who is playing him or whatever. And we're going to go through a couple of things um, in his talents and abilities, as well as his win rate in professional gaming to explain why he's a, a hero that you should be uh, paying attention to. So let's start off with his win rate. And if you uh, see him here in Hot Slogs, you have to scroll all the way, the, all the way down, 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 down. Here he is, Abathur. Um, he's the two, four, six, eight, uh, nine. He's in the top 10 from the bottom, uh, which means he's pretty bad in terms of win rate. His win rate is going up um, the last seven days. So that's positive for him, for the little slug. But um, he has a pretty bad win rate. Even if you um, use additional filters and hot slugs and then increase his skill by just... Uh, using masters you will see that he still has pretty bad win rate um overall which is due to the page not loading do, 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 do. there you go so he is not as bad as he is in the other leagues but he still has pretty bad win rate um at 53 percent if you look at the other heroes if you scroll up there's a lot of heroes that you can scroll up to at uh, the top uh, until you see him but um, in masters you see that his win rate is much better and you see that um, he is picked and banned a little bit, but his popularity at 13% is not super high. Um, obviously, he is played in nearly every HTC game, or at least banned in a lot of HTC games. He has a very high popularity in pro games, and um, why we're going to go through it with that um, in the replay. But for now, you just have to know, he definitely needs some skill, um, and he more importantly needs a team uh, around him. So you can't just pick him uh, wherever you want. Um, you can definitely pick him first or last pick. It's totally fine. Like the way you pick him, it's not that important. More important is what you pick around him. And we're going to go through that a little bit later on. Let's have a look at his talents. Um, we're going to also um, reduce this to master just because that is more uh, applicable. And then we're going to go and use a little bit more data. We're going to go over a little bit of a month um, to give us a little bit more uh, games. So you can see that regenerative microbes is the most picked uh, talent at the moment. He also has the highest win rate. This gives you the ability to heal a target by using your carapace. So if you use sem Symbiote on his head, um, you get new abilities and you can use E to heal your ally. Um, the other talents at the moment are not considered to be uh, very competitive. As you can see, Survival Instinct also has a pretty low win rate. Um, with 40%, that's really, really bad. Uh, while, you know, game spent obviously is also very low. So it's difficult to see or to, you know, get full conclusions. But at the moment, regenerative microbes is definitely the talent that you want to go to on level one. Um, there's other builds that do work. Um, pressurized glands, for example, with an Illidan also can work. But this is a, the best all around talent at the moment. And Venom Nests can help if you go full um, Mines build. That being said, many people don't really like this build because it focuses too much on you putting Mines down. And you also basically need the enemies to walk through those nests to get full potential out of this the microbes here you can use this over and over and over again on uh, allies and this is guaranteed to heal them like no matter what the enemy is doing you heal them a little bit obviously if they destroy your shield they heal a little bit less but it's guaranteed the mines if you are unlucky or if you don't uh, position them properly or if your team um, just gets wiped they don't do that much because they do only little damage, even if they are empowered. On level 4, you normally go for Sustained Carapus. As you can see, it has the highest pick and also the highest win rate. Sustained Carapus gives you um, the opportunity to last, uh, have your sheet last until um, the full cooldown is down. And that means even if you uh, remove the hat, the Sunbout, from the target, the target still keeps the shield and therefore also gets the shield heal from the level 1 talent. Um, the mine build uh, would go probably for um, prolific dispersal but ballista spores also is something that you can pick but as you can see 
and the popularity is not there um, at all. Adrenal Overload um, works well with pressurized glands. Um, it gives you attack speed. Again, that's probably something you want to play with a melee hyper carry like Illidan. But we're going to focus on, on the build that the pro is playing, um, which is why. Um, well, why is because we want to see how, why they use it and how it's very, very good on Abathur. Level 7 Mule has not the highest win rate, but um, as you can see, very high pick rate. This will allow you to heal your structures, um, which is one of the reasons why Abathur is picked a lot uh, on some maps, because it helps you uh, survive some of the map objectives, like for example on Sky Temple. Other than that, you can see that Needle Spine um, has also pretty high pick rate and is actually a pretty good winner as well. This is helpful if you, again, have the melee, um, Assassin, Hyper Carry, and then Vile Nest. The movement speed slow can be super annoying, so if you go Mine Build, from level 7 on you're super annoying because you have lots of um, mines and then you will also put them everywhere and they slow down enemy rotations this can be really really good uh, as well network carapace um, is something that you can in my opinion take if you don't go for mule so in my opinion on towers of doom mule is not the best i know that most pros still take it uh, and there's definitely value in having mule but i do think that network carapace can work especially well um, on bigger maps like warhead junction um, or Cursed Hollow, where you uh, heal most of your minions uh, with a level 1 heal and the Network Carapace. So I do think there's some value in it, but normally you will see in pro games um, Mule, and we're going to talk about it in the replay a little bit more. So then we have Ultimate Evolution and Evolved Monstrosity. Please don't get confused by this win rate. Um, in my opinion, this is one of the worst heroics in the game. And I'm not saying this because it doesn't teamfight very well, or that I don't want you to split push, but I think this is like a little trap heroic. It can be really powerful if you get it farmed. So if you can, you know, get a lot of minion sacks on it, it's super powerful. It can like, I don't want to say three shot, but it like I think five or six attacks, and it can kill Tracer or Genji. Um, it's like super super strong if you get the farm. The issue is you have to get the farm, and while you're getting the farm on the monstrosity and keeping it safe, you can't do anything else. So this is taking away your power in soaking uh, two lanes, it takes away the power of helping your team, and it doesn't put another body on the battlefield. This can also not take any mercenary camps or uh, boss points. So for example, let's say there's a 5 on 5 fight, um, well 4 on 5 because you're Abathur, uh, on the boss pit, and your team gets wiped, but you get the kill on everybody with Evolve Monstrosity, you can't take the, the point, you have to burrow there with your body. But ultimate evolution can take points as well. So um, this will give you more team fighting ability. You're putting the fifth body um, on the battlefield that is desperately needed. And that's one of the reasons why you need a good composition around Abathur. If there's no good ultimate evolution targets, the draft has kind of failed. But Evolve Monstrosity, it is currently, I think, not viable to pick this um, for the simple reason that you have to farm it to be powerful. And um, if you don't farm it, it can be very easily killed and has a very long cooldown. So um, Ultimate Evolution is the go-to, as you can see. Um, this shows also like how strong it is or how weak the other one is. Um, nearly 100, well, nearly 95% pick rate on this. And again, don't let the win rate um, confuse you here because it's it's very, you know, small amount of game. So uh, people have some fun by snowballing, I guess. Level 13 is where it can be like different for some games um, we will look at what abathur is killing in um, the replay in a second but there's assault strain which cleave and explode i don't think that this um is very good because it doesn't really um, help you clear the wave much quicker because the minions normally are not an issue like you want to uh, be able to take down um, buildings much more effectively which gives you uh, the range attack here uh, a little bit more uh, space to do this the assault strain if it explodes well it walks into the tower it doesn't do anything the Locust at least gets some attack um, off when it has the Bombard strain. Spatial efficient efficiency, um, you get another stab stack, you can see also not picked very much, um, the win rate is pretty okay. Um, and then Soma Transference is normally what you will see uh, for most Aberthurst. Basically you have Spike Burst, who which has another heal, so you would go onto a head, um, Spike Burst if there's heroes uh, around him, and then use the E to give him the shield and the heal, so you have a double heal on this. Uh, which makes uh, Abathur even more of a supporter. On level 16, you will see different things in different games. In Hero League, you will oftentimes see um, lo Locust Brute um, spawn on a group of Locusts. This will be used to basically push lanes in 
so you can have a better pushing with Abathur. Especially on big maps or large maps, maps this is um, pretty helpful to create those like super big waves that can take a keep or something like this late game. That being said, it's not picked as often, but has a pretty okay win rate. This also doesn't give you anything in a team fight. Um, it just, you know, it literally is a pushing uh, tool, which you don't necessarily need with Abathur. Volatile Mutation, in my opinion, is probably the worst talent in the game at the moment, because it actually only helps with um, Evolve Monstrosity. Um, and I think it's also helping with um, Ultimate Evolution, because it just basically gives you, um, what is it called, the Burning Fire talent on level 13 that everybody else has. Um, the aura uh, it's again i don't think you should ever take this um, this will be only uh, useful um, for a very small subset of people and then you have elemental spikes um, movement speed if you um, sorry it slows movement speed if you hit enemy heroes uh, this can be very good for chasing but most people want to go for carapace increased movement speed on adrenaline boosts um, this means that you have full e-build or nearly full e-build um, this will give your um, enemies, first of all, chances to escape, but also uh, gives them chances to uh, chase. So um, these two are very similar. Um, most people prefer having movement speed on heroes because it gives you more options um, to also run away. While Envenom Spikes, um, it can help running away, but um, that being said, having enemies slowed sometimes doesn't work because they have clans or whatever um, on the movement speed. Unless they have a slow on you, they can't stop you from running away. Level 20 only has one talent um, that is taken in most competitive games, as well as in Hero League, which is Hive Mind. Um, this gives you Symbiote at, on two targets, so your Q ability will be on two hats. That also means that um, two people get the shield, two people get the heal, or even more he people get a heal if you have the, um, the level 7 network carapace. So this is what's taken most of the time. You will see Locust Nests on, in Hero League a lot. Um, this, again, is combined with the... the um, where is it? The level 13, no, the level 16 locust brute um, spawn and the locust nest. So basically you have two locust um, talents that will just give you more pushing power. Again, this is being used in Hero League a lot just to have those huge waves pushing into uh, keeps. I don't think it's uh, like bad. I actually take it myself quite a bit, but it again doesn't do anything in team fights and can also be killed very quickly. So if the enemy has a global hero, um, they will take this out very, very quickly and it doesn't get a lot of value. Um, that being said, they can create pretty good waves here. If you go Lucas Brood, Locust Nests, um, with a Bombard Strain, you have pretty okay push, uh, but you miss out on a couple of um, talents that will help you uh, teamfight. So again, if you're going to go the pro build, you want to go Regenerative Microbes on 1, Sustained Carapace on 4. You will go probably go Mule on 7 um, or Network Carapace. Mule is uh, the safer uh, bet for most of the, the professional teams. Ultimate Evolution on 10. And then you normally go Soma Transference on level 13 and uh, Adrenaline Boost on 16, and then you go Hive Mind on level 20. So, we're going to move over to the Abathur statistics on Master League. You can see his popularity is by 27%, which is pretty high for um, such, a, such, a little, such a special hero. That was difficult. And his win rate is by 50, on 50%, um, so it's pretty good. Uh, what, from what you can tell. Abathur is picked pretty much early on. Um, he gets banned out a lot, and um, especially on maps like Curse Hollow, Towers of Doom, Sky Temple. Um, these are all maps that he's very powerful on, and you can see that his win rate um, doesn't necessarily like show that. Like He's not like 60-70% or whatever uh, in a lot of games, but he can be the game-deciding hero uh, in a lot of cases. If you look at builds, in the pro level, you can see that's um, exactly what I said. You're going to go uh, Mule. You sometimes go Needle Spine on level 7. Um, not a lot of uh, heroes, uh, pro players, go for the Network Carapace, even though I personally like it a lot. Um, but you can see here, like this is um, Pressurized Glands. That's more like a melee um, kind of heavy build. But all of them nearly go for the Symbiote um, update on level 20. Uh, and there's not a lot of um, viability in, in a lot of other things. Um, you see most of the talents go over and over. You can also see sometimes you get Evolved Monstrosity in one game. Um, but overall, his, his build hasn't um, changed quite a bit. Uh, and you can see Ultimate Evolution is picked nearly every time. Currently, you can see his win rate is really high in, the, in this stretch. Um, 75% with the Carapace and then also the Carapace on 16. 
And we're going to look at this match um, today. We're going to look at Team Liquid versus Method on Sky Temple. Um, you can see the bands um, Tracer and Maya have removed, as well as Sonia and Mediv. Um, Abathur against Liquid oftentimes is the first ban, especially on Sky Temple, Towers of Doom, and Cursed Hollow. And the reason for this is that the maps are so large that Abathur gets a lot of value, even though um, you will have issues at the beginning of the game. Why that is, we're going to go into replay right now and then talk about that. So here we are on Sky Temple. I'm going to go into the vision of Hazuops and then I'm actually going to go first and remove the timeline because that's annoying. There you go. So Hazu is setting up camera um, hotkeys here. You can do this if you don't know with um, Control F5, F6, F7, F8 and probably F9 even. Um, this means that if you press F5 then after you bound it to Control F5, your camera will jump to that point. He does that so that he has easy hotkeys to look at all the forts that he has. He told me that he then rebinds it to the keeps once the fort is down. This is something that you can do um, to basically help you jump around easy, more easily. So you already saw he put down three mines and these are in very interesting positions. So this one is here for purely vision so that he can see who's coming in here. Um, the hacker's taking the vision, but this one helps uh, just give them vision if somebody walks into it. And then he also put one down here. These are very popular um, spots, the, the bushes around here and here. This is one of the um, jobs that Abatha has, um, which is just giving, granting vision to the, end, uh, to, the, to the team by putting down mines. Again, one mine down to just give vision. And now the game starts for him by just being a second support for his team. He has the heal on level one. Again, just vision so that people know where everything is. You will see that Abathur, in most of the cases, will put his hat on somebody and then remove the hat. Um, this is getting more um, effective from level 4 on when the heal keeps going even though he removed his hat. In the early game, Abathur compositions normally have a pretty hard time, which is why it's important that you draft around him. Um, without the fifth body on the battlefield, you will have issues soaking um, a lot of the XP on all the lanes. Your rotation is a little bit weaker because even if you rotate as four, the enemy team has another hero somewhere else. So you're going to miss out on one lane. Therefore, normally you don't rotate as four, but um, have to rotate as three. Three is less than four. Therefore, it's more difficult to fight in some occasions. As you can see here, Method also tries to just push in one lane uh, because Abathur actually doesn't uh, do that very effectively. Uh, and like he doesn't push very good in the early game and his team um, suffers from having that happen to them because they need to react to it and put multiple bodies towards that push lane. Therefore, the XP on other lanes are not getting soaked. While Abathur can soak multiple lanes, generally speaking, he doesn't want to do it very early in the game because if he body soaks lanes, he is out of position or he can be out of position and therefore he can be caught. You can see he's just putting mines down wherever he can, whenever he can. He just um, puts them on cooldown and then he just helps cleaning the waves um, with his symbiote or head on people. He's soaking in the middle now with his body. It's a little bit interesting so he's um, deciding to go back, but that's something that you can do. Just using your body to soak a little bit with it. Um, you have approximately half your screen, so um, these minions, if they were enemy minions, they would be still in, probably still in XP range, but everything that is gonna, gonna happen on the other side, which he doesn't see at the moment, isn't working anymore. So you have to be pretty close, which makes uh, body soaking at the beginning pretty dangerous. You saw that he put a mine down at the night camp, um, this just to confirm that they are doing it, and again he moves out now to get a little bit of XP, and puts more mines on for vision. So basically your mines are vision tools, they should um, give your team indicators of where the enemy is right now, what they're doing, um, or what they might be doing. The cool thing about the mines are is that if it's a neutral um, unit, like the boss, you can put it down and it's not going to be triggered by the boss. So only the enemy will um, trigger the mine if they attack the boss because then it's active, or if they walk over it. So even if you uh, put it down on the boss spot, and it respawns, it doesn't trigger the mine, therefore your vision stays there. Um, that's really important that you keep that in mind. 
that mines are always or should always be used to either clear a wave like he's doing it now or for vision um, so that you can tell your teammates where everybody is. So now he's just um, rotating his symbiote on and off of people. So a lot of people that play Abathur will uh, use Q on a hero and then stay on this hero until the cooldown for his shield is up again. But as you can see, it's a 12 second cooldown, but Symbiote only has 4 seconds of a cooldown. That means if you use Symbiote, put the shield on somebody, heal them, and then remove the Q from them, and then wait for the Q cooldown to come up again, and use it again on the same hero, you're much quicker um, with the shield. So instead of having a 12 second cooldown, you only have a 4 second cooldown. Therefore, it's really important that you just rotate your um, Symbiote from hero to hero. You basically uh, Q on somebody, E, remove the Q, and then move on. My temple's power. Now we're going to look at uh, talents again. That's what the pro players are playing at the moment. Um, regenerative microbes on uh, on one, sustained carapace on four. This allows you to do the rotation that I just said as well more effectively because you, for example, can now heal the Dehaka, um, give him the shield, and then switch over to somebody else. The shield will not be destroyed by the minions, therefore he gets the full heal out of it and therefore um, doesn't lose any any of the, the heal, and you don't have to stick on him uh, to get him the heal. On 7 you get Mule, especially on Sky Temple, this is very powerful. And you will see that um, this fort will be healed now, and it took quite a bit of damage already. But if you use Mule correctly, you can have situations where you literally have a half-health fort, use Mule twice, and it's going to be repaired fully. On Sky Temple, this is super powerful because the objective attacks buildings directly. That means that you can't avoid the damage, it just fires. But if you can heal up the damage, you can theoretically have two temples fire on the same fort because your first temple was denied, or not denied, but it was basically reverted um, by healing up the, the fort again. This time they wanted to go on Illidan, so he stays on uh, the Greymane with the Symbiote Head to give more damage um, on this. And as you can see, the mule is healing up the fort pretty nicely. This is your second job um, after supporting your um, heroes is pushing out waves. Um, here you can also see um, this was a dangerous burrow. He didn't see faults at first and he just burrowed down here. He then cancelled the burrow by um, right clicking to walk. Doing this will put your deep tunnel um, on the cooldown. So you have to be a little bit careful about this that you don't um, click your deep, deep tunnel and then right click because it can uh, cancel it and then it's on cooldown. So it's kind of bad on, on bigger maps. In this case, you can just walk down more safely. And here you're gonna see the powerful, or how powerful Mule is. So Fawzat knows that the next temple phase is bottom. So he's trying to attack the, the well so that the well gets destroyed. That being said, Aretha puts his head here on the minion and Nick doesn't want to get more damage from the minion um, and Aretha's head, therefore he moves a little bit back. And what Haswops is doing now is he has Mule up again and he puts Mule down on the well. The well is being healed and now he's gonna even hat the well to shield it as well as destroy the minion wave so that the well survives. And as you can see with the Mule and the support from Earthra, the well will be here for the next temple phase unless the enemy team destroys it. If there was no Mule in your Abathur, this would have been dead and therefore would have been a disadvantage for the red team. Let's pause one more time. If you look at the XP though, you can see that the blue team has a huge XP lead and that is in uh, no small uh, case because they can rotate more freely and therefore you can, they can do more siege damage. As you can see, they have two heroes that have huge siege damage and pretty big um, XP soaked. Both of them have more um, XP than uh, Abathur even, and Greyman. And Sukuf and Garrosh have actually um, struggled quite a bit to get XP. This is because the rotations for Method are much safer at the moment because they have, have more people on the spots. Um, this is something that can happen uh, to most Abathur compositions, especially on smaller maps like Sky Temple and Towers of Doom, because the enemy team can rotate more safely and they have, again, the bodies on each lane, which will help them um, control the XP. On bigger maps, it sometimes uh, doesn't work out for the enemy team or for the non-Abathur team for the simple reason that Abathur can actually win pretty much any solo lane for you. Um, if you have a solo laner that even has a bad matchup, 
you can still support him um, whenever he needs it with Abathur. So, for example, if you have a total lane on top, um, Ragnaros versus Leoric, um, you can always just head the Leoric and heal him up while the Ragnaros needs to sustain with the minion wave. Um, and therefore, it's difficult um, for the Leoric, uh, sorry, for the Ragnaros to win because it's basically every time the two versus one. In this case, um, Azu stays on Eternal to give him uh, more power uh, to help him kill the fort. That being said, the switch would have probably been useful um, to heal him up again, which he did now. Unfortunately for him, his efforts are not uh, fruitful and he loses his Tehaka. That being said, you can see every time he uses his head, he switches over to somebody else after he uses it. And now he's just like trying to defend um, them from pushing a little bit. You have a little bit of a push power with that um, hat of yours, where you can distract some enemies or um, de-push some, some minion waves. Just putting some down some mines to have a little bit of a de-pressure. And now his team is coming in. This is important. So this is Ultimate Evolution in level 10. Um, it's unfortunately a little late for, for them um, to use it. And Ultimate Evolution has one weakness, which is you have to commit to the fight. Uh, in this case, that's fine because the blue team is committing to this fight and they're actually winning it. But it's important that you have viable copy targets for Ultimate Evolution. In this case, he took um, Garrosh, but only because Garrosh was already dying and he wanted to have some um, hero to copy. And also Garrosh has quite a bit of CC, so he was hoping he could maybe use the fort to uh, do some damage. That being said, if you don't have a viable copy target, um, which can happen quite frequently if you don't draft very well, for example, if you draft mages like Kelthas or um, Gul'dan, they heavily uh, rely on the enemies being clumped up and they don't do a lot of things very well without talent. So Gul'dan, for example, needs his um, E talent or Q talent on level 1 to be finished to make uh, big jumps in, in his damage. And, if, and you don't have talents on the copy target. So if you don't have that and the hero is pretty weak early or without talents, it's not a very great copy target. Um, Liquid, in this case, has a couple of good targets. Stukov and Greyman both are pretty strong without any talents. And especially Greyman can uh, kill anybody basically um, just with his Warken form and um, Razor Swipes. So he's the perfect um, target and therefore is always, uh, always drafted, or not always, but often drafted with um, Abathur. Another example would be Jaina. Uh, Jaina is drafted with Abathur because her trait actually affects the original trait uh, Jaina as well. So that means that if you slow somebody with the Abathur copy, the original Jaina still gets the bonus damage from the slow. So now we can see the map has opened quite a bit um, and Method still has the exp, uh, XP advantage uh, in this game. And now Abathur is going to be very key to catch up in the XP but also try to basically stay in the game. You will see Hazu Ops just putting down mines where he can to give vision and then supporting his team to clear waves more quickly. Having good wave clear with Abathur is also very important. Um, in this case, they have Greyman and Tehaka, um, which is very, very good. Both heroes are super good at clearing waves. And with Tehaka, they have a second global, basically. So even if uh, Abathur is denied from body soaking or soaking two lanes, you have a second global, which can um, heavily impact um, the XP gain for the team, which is, again, very important because early on, you will struggle and fall behind. So. Let's have a look at what Abathur is doing now. Um, the team decides to, to, to take boss because they can see um, three or four heroes on the map. Fawcett is mid and he also doesn't have Mighty Gust, so it's pretty easy and safe to do the boss unless the enemy can invade them. Looking at the map, um, Mafrun and Genji are top. So Abathur knows this and might have called it out as well, actually. But generally speaking, the team made the call, we're doing the boss now. So what Azu is going to do now is Ultimate Evolution the Greyman. He's a little bit unlucky because he gets stunned um, and loses a bit of time to use the Greyman. That being said, you can see how much value they get from just the Greyman copy. Two Greymans are so powerful that they can take the boss in no time. They forget the boss and then this is also important what Hazu is doing. He just not just stands around and does nothing with the rest of the time. He tries to do a little bit more damage. 
it ends up not being too much damage because you get slowed in his attack speed, but it's really important um, that you just use the copy as much as you can. So if you use it and, you know, you won the team fight or whatever, try to get some damage uh, to minion wave or to buildings um, so that you get full advantage out of the copy. This is also a very sneaky um, mine. This is a, a prime spot because you only see Genji here. So they might be hiding in here to trap anybody who's coming out of here. So basically this could be bait. And with these two mines, um, Abathur is checking for his team very safely if somebody is spawning. The mines don't give you vision until they're fully spawned. I think they take like two seconds or so um, to fully spawn. So just be aware that just because you put a mine in there, you don't see any anything yet. So we have to wait a little bit to actually get vision. There you go. And now we have vision in these. So we're going to switch over. See, now they have they give vision and this will also give vision now. So now you have vision in them and now you can can see in these bushes. Um, just keep that in mind because putting down one mine doesn't give you any vision. I've seen people um, put a mine down and then burrow into the bush right away and just get ganked because, you know, there's already somebody standing in there. So red team has um, taken the advantage with the boss, which will let them um, catch up in XP a little bit. Um, that being said, if we pause it one more time um, and look at the XP numbers, you can see that the red team has two heroes that are um, increasingly uh, creating a bigger advantage for the uh, for the blue team. Sorry, for the red team. No, it is the blue team, but they're red. Who cares? Um, for the left team, um, they're nearly 16, while the enemy team only is 14. Uh, and this is to, in no small part to these two guys. Um, Illidan is playing Hunt, so he's playing in... Uh, a global hero. This is also important to know if you play against Abathur. You should have somebody who can soak all lanes very quickly. Um, we have Illidan and Falsa that do the job um, for this uh, team on, on Method's side. You can also have Dehaka, for example, if you draft him against Abathur um, to contest the lanes. Um, you can also have Junkrat that can then with level 13 and his mind build, or his mind talent on level 13, um, jump from lane to lane. But it's really important if you play against an Abathur that you have wave clear. And I know I've been talking about Waveclear um, quite a bit over the last couple of videos, but it is probably the most important aspect um, in Heroes of the Storm, if you're drafting, that you have heroes that can um, clear the waves. We're going to jump down uh, back a little bit because I want to show you something that is also important on Abathur. I see a lot of people hatting this minion because it's the minion that is in front, but it also only has a little bit of life left. So if you had this, sorry, if you had this minion... Um, it will just die. Even with the shield and the and the heal, it's in the front, it's getting attacked by two ranged minions, and therefore it's going to die very soon. So using it like this is normally a bad idea, because it will just die very quickly. That being said, it's not the end of the world. If you, you know, miss the timing, it's totally fine. But in this case, he saw that the minion, mage minion was lower, and he goes into a ranged minion. Generally speaking, you probably don't want to be going on the very low health target if you don't have the healing and shielding talents. Um, for example, if you go for the uh, melee build and the minion is this low, you don't want to hit it because it just dies while you're hitting it. And then you have a four second cooldown and will maybe miss out on a couple of um, minions. This is the little bit boring part of Abathur. Um, he's going to soak the lane like this by just having the hat on it. Now, one important thing to say is that the mines can also give you XP. Um, if the mines get the last hit, meaning the damage that they do kills the minion, you're going to get the XP. Um, same goes for your locusts. If the locust kills a minion, you get the XP from that kill. Um, if the minion just stands next to uh, the enemy minion, sorry, if the locust, yeah, if the locust stands next to an enemy minion and it dies, but the locust didn't do the last hit, you don't get any XP from it. Um, so the last damage uh, for the minion to die has to come from you to get experience. So you can get experience from mines and locusts, but generally speaking, when people say double soak, they mean um, symbiote head and then having Abathur in the lane where you can body soak. With the lineup that Method has, it's very, very dangerous for um, Hazu Ops to body soak, actually. Um, Fault that can fly in very quickly and do a lot of burst damage to you. So um, that's dangerous. And then, Ab uh, then Illidan has the hunt. So if he sees you and is in hunt range, you're basically dead because you can't burrow as fast as he hunts you and then just kills you. 
Now his team is trying to contest the vision point and one of the temples, therefore um, Hazu just tries to soak as much XP as he can. Again, with the healing talent and the shield talent it's okay to ha um, hat the low HP minion, but generally you should avoid that and try to um, hat high HP minions just so that you don't lose out on the XP. And you can see that his mines are always on cooldown. He never um, has more than one or two uh, mines available to him because he uses them as soon as they get active. You will see it here. Rotation is done and now he put both mines down um, and he uses the minimap for that as well. You can see he used two of them in the bush there and now he's using ultimate evolution and that's one of the, the downsides of Abathur and ultimate evolution. If you don't win the fight very um, early on it oftentimes can lead to the situations like this we you use your ultimate evolution um, and it doesn't actually do anything because you lose uh, a hero very early. So they lost Greymane uh, basically before the evolution spawned and therefore were, they were already um, in a disadvantageous fight for them. And then the ultimate evolution again doesn't have any talent so therefore it's just as strong or weak as the as the hero on level 17 would be without any talents. Um, so it was very, in this case very squishy Greymane. Uh, who got killed very quickly. Uh, also don't forget that the uh, ultimate evolution does give XP. So you don't want to feed the evolution into the enemy. So if you can avoid it, uh, try to uh, let it run out. Then it doesn't give any XP. Um, or if you have to die, um, try to die uh, You know, by killing somebody. If you just feed it, like just, if you just copy somebody, and then run into five heroes and die, you just basically fed them um, XP, and that's very unnecessary. Method's draft so far has been uh, pretty advantageous for them. They have been up in XP for the whole game, and now they're one and a half levels up, and they're going to be level 20 earlier than the Abathur draft. And that's one of the reasons why Abathur has such a low win rate. He definitely doesn't uh, play well against teams that soak XP better than he can soak XP. So if the enemy team has great wave clear and good rotations, it's very, very difficult for Abathur to actually be effective. They're contesting here this camp because um, they want to fight before level 20 to get um, XP back uh, from the underdog bonus, basically, to catch up on the uh, on method. So the invade was um, done by that. Uh, and he didn't use ultimate evolution because he knew, kind of, that... Method wouldn't contest this, um, so therefore you don't want to use Ultimate Evolution just to take the camp. If they had contested it, he wanted, would have used it uh, probably very early on uh, when, he, when he saw them. So again, this is a special ma case because they have two heroes that can fly on Abathur very quickly. If it was any other draft where there wasn't a global that can hunt him down, um, Abathur would probably try to position himself here, um, somewhere in the bush or something like that, to take also the XP from these minions. Um, he will now have to soak XP here and here with the Symbiote, which is not the most effective thing. And he also have to, has to take care of his teammates. Obviously, this is a professional match, so these guys are in, in, in the comm tools. Meaning, if they need help, they will just let them know. Um, like, for example, if they want to engage, they will know or they will say that they're going to engage into something. Um, therefore, it's easier for him um, to catch up on what his team is doing. If you're playing a solo queue, Abathur, it can be very, very challenging to look at the map and look at the mini-map and look at your teammates and everything. So he definitely needs, uh, requires some um, some practice. And again, this is one something that I mentioned earlier. You can see the mine um, below the boss has been planted and it will not trigger the boss, um, which is amazing because you basically have vision on the boss and whenever they the enemy team tries to take the boss, the mine will give you vision of them arriving and starting the boss as well. So just take advantage of these um, situations where you can put the mines down um, before the enemy knows that you're doing it. And on the other hand, if, you have, uh, if you're the enemy of Abathur, always try to kill the mines if you see them. Um, when they are planted, when they spawn, you see them until they are completely spawned, um, therefore just kill them. Even if it's annoying a little bit and you maybe even have to dismount or whatever, it's totally worth to kill mines um, because they dismount you after, like later if you don't see them and um, they might actually uh, give vision in situations where you don't give want to give the enemy vision. Also important, use Mule as much as possible. 
Uh, it has a 60 second cooldown, so it's pretty long cooldown, so you don't want to waste it. But if you have a damage building, there's no use to uh, keeping uh, a mule for like a later date or something. Um, just use it. And you can see now on the on the bottom, they got vision from the mine. They see this because they, they got hit by the mine and the mine uh, reveals them for four seconds. So this is great because now they know what's going on. And this is exactly what Abertha wants to do. He saw that they were fighting on the boss, immediately takes the Greyman copy and jumps in here. And this is, oh, I just saw that. I, we have to talk about this uh, real quick because it's, that's fantastic. Wow. Okay, so they have vision and we're going to talk about somebody else right now because this was, this is crazy. Where is he? Nope. Where is... Ah, oh, there you go. Okay, we're gonna look at Garrosh for a second because this is... Like, Sport Billy is, is a god. So, they have vision on everything and we're gonna look at, again, just because it's so good what he's doing. So he has um, his level 4 talent, I think, um, Indomitable, which means you can become unstoppable for 1.5 seconds, right? So, look at what he's doing and we're gonna have to pause it a little bit to uh, give you a little bit of a slow-mo effect. Um, here comes the, the Grey Man copy from Hazwops. He go, uh, Hazops, uh, sorry, Nora goes on Trimpy with um, Genji. And now look what happens. They want to, uh, sorry, Method wants to uh, cocoon somebody so they have an advantage in bodies. And they want to then kill somebody. And look what happens. They don't want to cocoon Hazwops because cocooning the copy is kind of wasted. Did you see this? Holy moly. We have to go back again. Speed it up a little bit. Look at who is getting cocooned in a second. So here comes the copy. And now look who's gonna get cocooned right now. This is where Anubarak is shooting it. Here, I think. There it is. You can see the cocoon um, animation around Sport Billy. And he pushes an Indomitable and cancels the cocoon. I wanna see if it's on a full cooldown now. Or if it just went on a five sec, it goes in full cooldown. Like this is so great. This is why you should be watching um, pro replays and in pro games. These little things decide games. Like not being cocooned here is is huge. Um, sorry for the little tangent. We're gonna go back to ha uh, Hazu Ops now. Um, but that was that was crazy good. So Hazu Ops is Rayman at the moment, and again he used his copy very early on. Because you want to commit to this fight. And they're 19 versus 20, so they're even down um, uh, heroics. Now, Ethereal jumps in with Hunt, follow up with Hinterlands Blast. But because of the pressure that um, the Greymanes took on Genji and everybody else, um, the red team actually gets the boss. And you can see Hazwops just try to uh, put as much pressure on people as he can. Here, this time, the heal didn't work out, but unfortunately, the also Shrimpy survives. Um, so. Yeah, crazy. He just put the mines down there because, um, well, I think that's the reason that I have come up with. Because the bottom lane is the lane that um, is most likely to be pushed after the boss is down. And it's also the most favorite lane to push because you will have the boss up again at some point. And then they will try to get uh, go for keep probably around bottom. Um, so putting the mines down here can help um, de-push that a little bit um, later on. Also, you just had a lot of mines left. So he just wanted to get rid of them to get the cooldown started, so um, he would re uh, respawn more mines uh, more quickly. So I never let um, the mines cap out fully, because um, you will basically be stuck with the maximum amount and then the cooldown will not be running. I'm gonna jump back a little, little bit to show you how powerful the mule is. So, Sky Temple is um, a good Abathur map, because this, the temples just shoot on the buildings. They don't do anything else. They just shoot the buildings. That means that if you can prevent damage to the buildings with a Tassada shield, for example, or restore health, this means that that damage can be negated. Um, so even if you, for example, get an early temple and get the, the four to half health, as we saw earlier in the game, it will not mean that you get the advantage um, from getting the objective. Meaning, even if you win the objective <clears throat> against an Amberthorn with Mule, you might actually lose um, out because 
while you have the objective, the app of the team actually tries to win a different lane. So he uses the shield and puts down the mule. Again, cool on up, shield, head down. The shield only does reduce a little bit of the damage that the temple does. But if you look at it, the four, the keep will die now here. Um, because it's pretty late game in the temples to okay damage to these buildings. But did you see how many shots it had to take to kill this keep? And normally you will take less shots from that. So using Abathur head um, and the mule, basically I want to say probably got like three or four shots from the temple negated. And that's huge because then the other keep um, doesn't get as much damage from the follow-up shots because it took longer to kill the first keep. Um, so this is something that Abathur can do on, on these maps. So whenever you have the enemy has an objective that does um, damage to your buildings, but it doesn't kill the building, that's perfect for your mule Abathur because he can negate any of this damage, um, which is also where if you play against Abathur and, for example, um, you know, get a, a fort down to like 20% or something, you have to try to make sure that you kill this because if you don't kill it, um, there's a good chance that Abathur just heals it to full again and whatever you invested to get the, the fort down to 40 to, 40 to 20 percent is basically negated so if you for example like spent like three or four um, heroics to get the fort down to 20 percent that means that you basically wasted these heroics and your time because everything just um, heals it up again let's have a quick look at the settlement build because we didn't talk about that so far um, besides the first ten, uh, or the first four talents. So on level thirteen, he's um, went for soma transference again. This is uh, probably the most picked talent in pro, uh, pro games at the moment. Uh, more healing for um, Abathur. So you're basically a second support at this point. And then Venom spikes. Um, Hazu opted in for the slow instead of the the speed. Um, both talents again are uh, useful and used. Um, just Hazu wanted to have an Venom spikes, and then level twenty hive mind, as I said. It's probably the only talent taken in pro games, um, just because it's so powerful um, with the heal. Let's pause really quick on um, the the stats. You can see Stukov is actually um, 13,000 behind um, Mafurion, but with the 15,000 heal from Abathur, they actually have the same healing. So even if you have a healer that is getting out-healed or outperformed by the other healer, if you have Abathur, you can support your um, support uh, with this build. And 15,000 healing over like 19 minutes is actually um, pretty strong for a second support. So now his job is to again put mines down wherever he can, um, and more importantly take the mines uh, and his hat to clear mid as often as he can. Um, keep fell, so that means now they're gonna spawn catapults in the mid lane. And this is your life in the late game, um, just trying to find uh, positions where you can put the symbiote on something and push out the lane. The way that you are set up now um, is great for Team Liquid. Um, the map is pretty wide open. That means that Abathur can move a little bit more safely. That being said, uh, Ilden has the hunt update, which means he has global range. Um, so as soon as he sees you, you're just dead. Um, therefore, you should never be in minion range um, as house at the moment because you just get hunted and, and killed. Again, use his heal. Heal got interrupted. And heal again. And heal away. And now he's using ultimate evolution. Again, the uh, red team uh, also committed the Dehaka. Therefore, it's used, good to use the ultimate evolution. The blue team would love to uh, evade here and try to get, get away from the Rayman. Azobs were was a little bit unlucky in with his um, his spells. We're gonna go back and look at this team fight again. So you can see um, the blue team wants to disengage a little bit because of um, the fact that they're not here as five at the moment. They also know that the uh, copy was used. So now Azobs unfortunately uses inner beast already. Um, it's good because he can fight here and try to attack, but now his E is on cooldown, so he can't go disengage and range attack, and um, Genji just um, ran away. So now his inner wolf will... Uh, oops. 
will run out. There you go. And it's an 18 second cooldown. So now he's weaker. Which, again, is um, why Ultimate Evolution sometimes will not do as much as you want it to do, because it doesn't do any damage um, with talents or whatever. That being said, it helped. It killed Genji, or helped killing Genji. And now you will see how powerful it is with the Symbiote. Um, he just puts it on somebody, suck two, heal two heroes with the heal, and he gives um, a pretty good burst heal on multiple heroes. Obviously, Suko felt there, so... It is a little mis misleading how much they um, healed up. And again, mine on the boss. The boss is respawning in a minute. Um, this mine will give them a good indication on when um, they're going to do the boss because they walk on it um, or trigger the boss walking on it. And therefore, um, Team Liquid will get vision. And again, using it on the Dehaka, just healing him up a little bit, helping him, helping him a little bit with the, uh, with the health and the temple. And you can see no, none of the buildings are super damaged, therefore he doesn't use um, Mule uh, at the moment on any of this. Uh, let's have a look if it's, if it's, if it's a mistake. Uh, we're gonna go here. Uh, this is a little bit like, so you could use Mule probably here, um, but this one is full, so it doesn't really uh, make that much of a difference. For a 6 second cooldown, you probably don't want to heal, um, or they don't want to use the Mule here, because it will waste most of the time. Like this is probably like 4 or 5 ticks from, of the Mule. So if you use it now, it will probably waste most of the time that the mule is active. And you want to probably waste, uh, don't waste it and wait for um, a temple or something to spawn before you use the mule. And you can see how far away he stays. And this is only because of the Illidan hunt. Like he stays so far back in his base because as soon as the enemy has vision on him, he might be hunted and killed. Like at any point of the game, Faulted and Illidan can just fly on him and kill him. So that's the reason why he's so defensive now. Um, generally speaking, you will probably see a little bit more body soaking from Aberthurst um, on at different times. And you can also see that the mine is re was removed. So that means that they can uh, assume that they are doing the boss. And now he just tries to push the lanes out that are not the mid lane because mid lane is being pushed out by the by the team. So he just tries to um, get the other lanes pushed out as quickly as he can so that they um, create pressure for the enemy team. And the enemy team lost all of the, the keeps now except this one. So if he can push this wave into the keep, it will die very quickly and therefore open up um, any backdoor strategies or, or cheeses. They saw the enemy too, uh, too late to go to the boss um, and didn't want to react to it. Uh, and they also have bottom keep still active, so they're pretty fine um, with them taking it, I guess. Uh, but it's a risky play. Again, he just pushes out the lane. And he's just going to get the keep now from this. There you go. Oh. And there's the keep. So now all keeps are down, which means um, one temple will actually be enough to decide the game. And you can see the mines help them a lot because they give vision of a lot of different things here. Um, for example, here you can, they can see the enemy is not doing um, this camp and they're not hiding this bush. So they probably will be walking around here. Um, and again, the vision is one of the most important parts of Abathur that you can give your team. This is also just annoying now. If you can annoy the false set, it's really good uh, because every little bit of health that false set loses might be important if they try to backdoor against him. Because if he has already like lost 10-15%, it's easier for Greyman to kill him. Ultimate Evolution is being used again. And this time he's using it on Stukov because he's worried that um, Stukov is going to die. And therefore, um, they will lose um, their healer. And you can see that uh, that actually happened. Illidan killed Stukov. But now, they have a second healer. And they have the silence. So while Stukov is not the best target, he definitely can help a little bit um, with a couple of things. He gives heal, and then also he has the silence and the slow. Therefore, um, it's very good for them to have that target. 
because Stukov, even without talents, has a pretty okay heal, and especially a pretty big uh, burst heal on everybody. So if you get can spread the, the Q on everybody, you have a pretty big heal, um, despite not having any talents for it. Now you can see the core defense, also important. He uses the shield um, on the core, and then he uses mule. So if he had used mule earlier, it might still be on cooldown, um, but this is a perfect time to use um, mule. Core defense, again, you can see mule healing up a percent every couple of seconds. And his team is still winning this fight. And that's pretty much um, going to be the end of the game. If you are the enemy team and trying to kill the uh, the core, by the way, here, um, try to kill the mule first because it just negates every couple of seconds a couple of percentages that you take off the core, and it can be super annoying. So um, again, if you core race, try to kill the mule first. Um, that being said, um, three heroes are dead for the blue team, and Illidan is like super low, so not much they can do. And again, the mule regenerates like proper health. Like it's not a, a shield that's regenerated in this case. You can see um, the core is going to go back up to 100%. So even if you do core damage, um, it will be able to regenerate that completely if you let it. Uh, and therefore, it's not like the shields that regenerate, it's actual like, health. And now the Team Liquid will just get the temple and win the game from this and the little push that they have going here. Okay, let's have a look at Aberthur's stats and um, the build again so you can have a look. Um, he obviously didn't die at all, but you can see that he has done most he hero damage um, in the game, actually, and most siege damage. So how do these numbers um, come together? The siege damage is mostly in, during the late game. As you can see, Falset actually did more siege damage. Um, and in the early game, we saw the stats saying like the Haka had more siege damage done and also more XP. He did still soak more XP than Aberthur, so um, that is... Basically because, again, Aberthur couldn't body soak any of the lanes due to the risk of being ca uh, caught by Falset or Illidan. The cool thing um, about the hero damage that you can see here, um, this is done threefold. You have the mines that do like trickle damage a little bit here and there. Then you have the symbiote on heroes and on minion waves that also does a little bit of trickle damage. And then you have the copy. And um, they have Greyman, which is a huge burst hero, has a lot of DPS, and can kill a hero. And this all combined creates this um, hero damage. And you've seen that um, Abathur hasn't been able to like do a lot of um, team fights because they were mostly behind in XP um, throughout the game. So this could be much higher if you um, often team fight, or if, for example, um, there's objectives that take a very long time. If you symbiote off, uh, on and off of people, it can lead to huge numbers um, in damage. So um, yeah, that's pretty cool. Again, XP contribution, you can see that now Dehaka and Abathur have taken over um, the red team uh, or method, which means that um, in the late game, they were able to do it more safely and um, use both of the globals, um, while the red team wasn't able to do that um, that much. Uh, that being said, they're also only um, behind by a 1,000 on Falset and only a little bit on, on Illidan. Overall, this is um, a pretty good game to show you um, what Aberthur should be doing. Um, give vision to your uh, teammates by using your mines and good locations. These mines can also be used to dismount the enemy or stop rotations or show rotations. So um, if we look again, the early game, he put uh, mines in these bushes, which is uh, where enemies are hiding. But also you can put mines here. So if enemies go down here to, to get, take this camp, they get disrupted and, and they get um, shown. As well on the defensive, defensive side, um, put him here, here, or here, so that when enemies um, try to invade you, you will see them early. Um, you can also put them here um, so that you see that. Uh, again, one of the most important vision ones is the one on the boss, so that you can see um, when the boss is going to spawn uh, and the enemies are doing it. Uh, the spawn is not that important, but that you can see when the enemy is taking the new spawn. Um, when they hit it, they will be um, shown by the mine because they step on it. Uh, and therefore you can see when the enemy is doing it. Other than that, um, you can also use it um, on the point, for example, if they are taking it. It's just so that if they ride in here and want to take the point and they're on the mount and they get dismounted, um, the hacker could come in and burrow and, and tongue them uh, much more easily if they are um, dismounted instead of staying on the mount. And then, generally speaking, um, bushes are always good places for the mines uh, to give vision. The second thing that you can do with your mines is put them on the lanes um, so that you can take out the minion waves. 
Um, so for example, these minions are spawning here. They're uh, walking always the same path and until they hit enemies, they will always be um, this uh, single file, basically one after the other. So if you put like two or three mines down here, where they meet the enemy uh, minions, you can basically uh, destroy uh, pretty much a full uh, minion wave for three mines and also helps you clear it. Then use your Q as often as you can on multiple targets, especially with this um, build. Use it on your heroes that need health and then swap off of them to soak XP. Lastly, um, again, this game was pretty bad for this, but you can body soak if it's safe. As you can see, um, he was in base most of the game, so you don't need to body soak necessarily. Um, it will obviously increase your um, XP soaked overall, but if it's dangerous, if the enemy is catching you, like if you die once, I would probably um, just stay in base and try to soak with your symbiote as much as possible. That's pretty much it. Again, open up the talents again if you want to see them for any other of the heroes uh, and look at what pro players are doing. But um, that's it for us. Thank you very much for watching. I hope um, it was helpful for you, Joker, if you are still watching. Um, thank you for the request. Um, much appreciated. And um, as always, I'm going to see you next time. Have a good one. Bye-bye.